Cool.fm is the perfect station for music lovers who enjoy a mix of adult pop, modern country, and classic hits. Our unique blend of different genres creates an awesome listening experience that you won't find anywhere else. With Cool.fm, you don't have to constantly change stations to hear the music you love. Just download the Live 365 app and start listening to our curated selection of modern adult and country hits, as well as the classics you know and love. So tune in to Cool.fm and start enjoying the best of all your favorite music in one place. Hi, I'm Ryan Estrada, the writer of Band Book Club and Occulted and a million other comics you can find at ryanestrada.com. And you're watching and listening to Two Geeks Talking. Wait, wait, am I the second geek? Of course. Why wouldn't you be? <laughs> Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we're interviewing the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. Of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We're joined today by a returning guest. He's been on the show in the past. He's a very multi-talented comic writer and creator. You know his work, of course, from Band Book Club, but he's coming back with a brand new series, well, comic at least, called Occulted. We're joined by the ever-talented Ryan Estrada. How are you doing today? Uh, great, great. I'm glad to be here. For those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking. My name is Ryan Estrada, and my job is to travel around the world, messing up, making mistakes, and meeting people more interesting than me, which gets me into a lot of trouble, but it does give me a lot of interesting things to make comics about. I have a lot of comics at ryanestrada.com that you can see, but the new one right now is about a person that I met here in Busan, South Korea, named Amy Rose, who one day I was putting together a storytelling show, and Amy went on stage and told a story that blew everyone's minds to the point that the entire bar went silent. No one was speaking, just everyone was crying. And we found out that Amy grew up in a cult just down the road from Heaven's Gate. And that cult taught her that Star Trek was real. Gandhi was a sexy space alien. Creatures from other worlds ruled our planet and our entire existence was about to end. And so she was not allowed to go to school. She was not allowed to read any books about anything but this cult's beliefs, because they said, if this world's ending, why would you waste time learning anything else? And it wasn't until she started watching things she wasn't supposed to, reading things she wasn't supposed to, that she learned what she needed to escape. And it's a book all about how she made that, how she realized she was in a cult and how she made that escape. That, that's amazing. That's, that must have been an, an amazing story just to hear. You always seem to be in the right place at the right time when it comes to crazy stories like this as well, too. And you also have a, a an amazing talent for bringing these stories to life in comic form. I just, like, I move to a new country every year for a decade. I, I get myself into weird situations. I get my own personal stories, but Amy has all the credit here for bringing this story to me. I just ran a storytelling show. It was called NDA. And the point of the show was that everyone that entered the building had to sign a non-disclosure agreement so that people could tell, like, the real deep personal stories that they're afraid to, that will get out or anything like that. And Amy told this story at that event and it just, I was so amazed because she had never told that story publicly before. And I'm so glad that even though my silly comedy bit of you're not allowed to talk with, about this outside, like beyond that, she agreed to work with me and turn it into a book, which is called Occulted. And it's out today. We have so much to touch on here. You have the story that Amy told. You have an amazing artist as well, too. Who's the artist on this series? Yeah, Jungmin Lee is another Busanite. This is a Made in Busan project. She's an amazing local illustrator who made her very first comic at one of our events. I did a 12-hour comic day. She made her very first comic. And I'm like, you made this this afternoon. This is one of my favorite comics I've ever read. And immediately her second book is Occulted. Now, how did you approach such a delicate subject as cult in your storytelling? Yeah, I think I took the same approach as I did with Band Book Club, like whether living through a dictatorship or living in a cult, like these are very serious stories that you want to give the seriousness, but also in order to tell a story, you want to tell the personal and there are parts that are fun, there are parts that are funny, there are parts that are scary. And I solved that by, I know a lot of other people who in writing these stories would say, this is my subject. Kyunsuk, Amy, I'm going to interview them. They're my subject. But that's, as I said, this is not my story to tell. So I always approached it as, will you be my co-author? And Amy is a writer. She's an amazing writer. She's performed on stage many times, sharing stories and poems and comedy. She's a stand-up comedian. Having her there to be a co-author, you know, she she knows the story. 
She knows the importance of it. I know how to structure it as a comic. And so we just kind of work together on it. And it, it has no choice but to be honest because it's coming from an honest place of how she feels and how she remembers her story. So then what role do banned books play not only in the story of occulted and why is literary freedom important? Yeah, Amy had no idea that she was growing up in a cult and she had no idea that anything that she was taught wasn't true because when that's all you're ever told from being a baby, like that you have no way of knowing. And the way she learned about the world is that uh, her cult was actually built, they like bought an old strip mall that had been abandoned. And like, I guess like gutted out the blockbuster video in the makeup store or whatever and turned it into a temple. And one of the buildings that had been there was an old day school and they had a library in the back. And that was one of the things that was left untouched. They left the library there, but they just sealed it off. No one was allowed to go in there because these are books you're not allowed to read. And Amy, as a kid, would sneak in there and just read these books, very basic books, like reading the encyclopedia and like looking up Gandhi and being like, wait a minute, where's this guy's like sexy muscles that he has in the book we read? Like, wait, where's his like, it doesn't even say he's an alien. He's a guy from India. You realize that like, there's one lie, then like, let's look further and see what else they're not telling me. And that's what allowed her to escape. And that's why it's important for all kids to be able to read books that people don't want them to read because you don't know what information you're missing until you see it. And right now in America, there's people trying to hide history from kids, the history of race relations. In America, they're trying to hide the existence of LGBTQ people by banning all these books. And it has gotten really bad in America and a lot worse than a lot of people know. Because just the last time we talked, when Bambuklo came out, this wasn't really an issue. And I was talking about history. But now things in America have gotten to the point that even Hensuk like is like, ooh, that's, I don't know about America. Because two weeks ago, Ban Book Club got banned in Florida. Because of that, I was able to look into this organization that's doing it like all across America. I got a copy of their secret uh, spreadsheet that has the reason why they banned all these books. And it's a lot like in Hyunsuk's day, it was, we're just getting rid of communist propaganda. In Amy's day, we're just getting rid of the lies about the world. And nowadays, the line is, we're just getting rid of pornography in schools. And that's what a lot of people believe because they don't read the documents. They're hidden away. But I'm looking at the books they're banning and the reasons, and they're banning like children's books about friendly bears because they say that stories of empathy and Zen are incompatible with Christianity. They banned like Ready Player One because they like underlined every swear word in it. And they they write like crap, kind of OK. And like every word they'd rate it from like OK to not OK. The important things here are they're banning stories about people that aren't like them. Number one, hiding the existence of people from uh, kids and also the kids that could see themselves in those books. It's saying not only are these books not fit for public display, but that means you are not fit for the world as well. I worry that it's making kids feel like that. And so that's why I've been kind of fighting against it and writing books on that topic. When working with Amy to write this comic, what was it like revisiting these difficult memories while working with her on these? Now, I, I know you can't speak to her experiences but what was that experience as a, as a co-writer and author it's something that i had to be careful of and think about how this goes to affect her because she knew how important the story was and how we wanted kids to be able to read it but the process of writing it and just digging deep into every one of these situations and experiences meant that you know she was having to relive the most traumatic experiences of her life so we structured the writing process very delicately where I would have the script for a certain amount of time. And then not until my part of it was done, do I pass it on to her and ask questions? Like, I didn't want to be asking her questions constantly like, hey, when this traumatic thing happened to you, how did you feel? You know, because she doesn't need that like in her day just popping up like, hey, let's relive a little bit of your trauma. By doing it in those stages, she was able to like get into that headspace, say what she needed to say, say what she wanted to say. And then forget about it for a while. I didn't want to be giving her nightmares for an entire two-year process. Yeah, no, definitely. That's that's something you don't want to relive. And the fact that this amazing comic is being published by Iron Circus as well, too. And Iron Circus has been publishing amazing comics like Band Book Club as well as this one for many decades now. Spike has a, a great eye for these types of comics. What was it like bringing this comic to Spike and Iron Circus comics to get published? Working with Iron Circus is great because Spike just has amazing taste for very weird things. A lot of things that most other publishers would be like, I don't know, that's a little too weird for me. 
Spike has the eye to be like, that's just the right amount of weird. Like with Band Book Club, we had no idea it was going to be popular. Kyungsook was like, why would we want to write a book about that? I just read some books. And then it blew up. And Spike just has this knack of taking these things that seem niche and weird and making them mainstream. And it was very easy to pitch occulted to her just because we had already been working uh, on Band Book Club. And I'm like, hey, turns out everyone I know has a secret wild band book story we got another one for you and as soon as i started sending her like pictures of these alien races and and like some costumes and things she's like this is a story that's important to tell that we want to tell and of course it's out now which is wonderful to see like Mm -hmm. that's that's great i you know you've done amazing work and you continue to do amazing work and i'm glad you're bringing these stories to light as well so that's wonderful how do you hope occulted will contribute to a larger conversation about cults and the dangers of groupthink yeah, what we tried to do in the story and what's what was interesting about it is that I realized that there are a lot of books out there about recognizing you're in a cult, how, the steps to escape, but these self-help books are only things people are going to seek out if they've already realized they're in a situation. I wanted to make a book that you could just read as a story and get this knowledge in your head to like even years from now recognize not just a cult, but the forms of manipulation can happen in relationships, uh, friendships, family groups. It's how people get sucked into pyramid schemes and multi-level marketing. It's how people get sucked into like toxic groups online. And I wanted to give people that message and in telling it in a story, especially a story like Amy's and what she was being taught about aliens that are you know controlling the universe and just telling people, here's an interesting story with this sci-fi adventure theme and then giving that information i hope that it's going to help them later in their life to to recognize these steps even if they're not looking for them can you touch on some of the steps that could contribute to this grab a copy of the book here and show you there's a whole section where amy in the abandoned library she's found uh this book and as she's reading it she sees them happening in her life we looked at a lot of reading she added her own to to create this fictional book that she used um but there's just, you know, we talk about uh, starting off with deception in them, pretending that the reason they're approaching you isn't what they're saying. Suggestion, this group, they were doing things like meditation and chanting to make people more susceptible to listening. There's things like attacks on your self, this self-esteem when people are telling you that you're wrong. You know, a lot of gaslighting, induced dependency, where the person that's trying to control you is making it seem like you can't live without them. Assault on identity, where they tell you what you think about yourself is not true. You see that happening a lot in the the book banning when they're telling people, you know, oh, you don't want this book about queer people because that doesn't exist, which is obviously a lie. And it just goes on from there through dread, leniency, punishment, this whole series of things that we talk about for many pages that just kind of chip down at your identity. So I think it's important to see whenever someone's trying to tell you that what you believe about yourself is not true and tell you that you need them to get along in the world, that's the very beginning of trying to control you and make you think only what they think. You know, looking at the the creative process and the writing process, what challenges did you face in terms of putting this book together? Because I'm sure some some things might have cropped up, especially in not only the creative process, but the writing style as well. One of the biggest challenges was something that we solved very quickly with the help of Jungmin, the artist. Originally, I was going to illustrate this book. It was going to be written by Amy and illustrated by me, and I was going to help guide it into a comic format. And then when we're working with Spike, she was just kind of like, got this email. This is very delicately trying to say like, hey, Ryan, so this is a very serious book about trauma and manipulation. And every character you draw looks really goofy looking and silly and funny. Can you maybe tone that down a little bit? And I'm like, I tried for a while and I'm like, I actually can't. I literally can't draw anyone that doesn't look like a doof. Maybe we should bring in another artist. Because I had found Min's work and loved it, Like I just said, hey, here's an artist who has this adorable but haunting style. And Spike said, that's perfect. And so bringing Min on was able to give the book this entire new feel that I could never have done myself. So a lot of times when you run into uh, trouble... One solution can be to work with more amazing people, and Jung Min is an amazing artist. What do you hope readers will take away from this story and the message of Occulted? 
I hope that they will take away that even when they're in the toughest situation possible in feeling trapped somewhere and feeling manipulated and lied to, that there is a way to escape. Because the situation Amy was in at the beginning seems like there's no way she could ever get out. She's a child and has no support structure outside of this this group that's manipulating her into terror. And so by showing how she got out, I hope it shows people they can get out of any situation the messages of the freedom to read i hope that people take that and uh, learn more about the world than they than what they know now and learn things they don't know and figure out what they don't know they don't know and have the most rounded look at the world as they can so that they can be independent and free now that the story is complete and it's out there for the masses how did this affect you creatively and personally it was just very touching to be allowed to work with Amy to tell this story. And with both Amy and Hyunsuk, I, I feel honored that I'm able to tell such important stories and bring some of my personality to it. Cause I, all the stuff I do on my own is very silly and goofy and funny. And being able to use that humor as a tool to tell a story has helped me think more about what stories I'm putting out in the world and make even my goofy, funny stuff have a message. Well, Ryan, I do hate to say it, but that is this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. I want to thank you once again for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Before I let you go, where can we find you? How can we support you? Of course, where is Occulted? And anything else you'd like to share and promote? If you just go to ryanestrada.com, everything you'll ever need is there. It has links to buy books and it has just thousands and thousands of pages of free comics and videos and things that's where i tell people to go yeah check out occulted it's in literally anywhere you buy books just tell them you want occulted and they can get it for you thanks again ryan i appreciate this is an amazing comic i can't wait to have you back on for whatever your next amazing creative project is and you know you're always a blast to talk to well it's been a blast well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two. Website's going through a revamp. Go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash tgtmedia. The podcast is finally back after 13 or so years because of reasons. You can find it at twogeekstalking.podbean.com or any streaming service where you get your podcast, including iTunes. And of course... As I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talking.